All right, well, I could certainly say for one thing, I did not expect this to be my return video, but I suppose life is kind of wild like that. So, um, did something happen? This is, this is the worst possible time to be doing a, a video in the back seat because, because of that. I guess we'll do it like this. Okay. Beautiful. This is a great video. Um, so what happened on Sunday or yesterday if you're watching this on release? Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? So I will say this. I was planning on not watching racing anymore. I, I was planning on being actually done for real this time. But the thing is, is that I love Richmond. Richmond is fantastic. I didn't watch trucks. I watched stage one of trucks and I was like, this fucking blows and went to bed. And, and, and that was a good decision. That was a good decision. I don't hate Majeski or anything, but like, who cares? Um, but I, I made an exception for the Richmond Cup race because Richmond has been phenomenal must watch race of the year one of the two for like the last four years so i was like now i'm gonna watch actually and i'm glad that i did wow that was quite something let's get straight to the point um this is not supposed to be a race review this is i i mean i know this is the backseat racer and all but like no this is uh this is not a race review maybe we'll see um Actually, you know what? This is a fucking race review. Fuck it. Um, it was great. <laughs> Fantastic event. One of the best races that I've watched this year. And, um, it was shaping up to be something special. Um, I will admit, the second stage, I was like, oh, th so the gimmick tires are actually working, but it's, like, actually really stupid? This is kind of stupid. I preferred when the strategy was natural and not because of a tire specifically designed to make people go faster. I, I preferred that. I preferred if, if, we, if we're gonna if we're gonna have any Richmond racing, I would prefer if it was not this. This is the this is not what I prefer. I prefer regular Richmond where tire strategy is actually a thing, you know, the entire time. If they got rid of stages, if they got rid of stages and just let them go hog wild on strategy and like anticipate, you know, there's never natural cautions at Richmond. It never happens until there's two laps to go. You know, no one ever wrecks at Richmond until it's two laps to go. It's a fucking, you know, requirement when it's two laps to go. But for the rest of the race, it's just 100% fine. Everyone drives perfect. Except for when it's two laps to go. Stupid. Um, uh, you can see the angle that I'm going to be going with this video. Um, but like, you know, it was a nice ch d change, I guess. It was interesting. But I was like, I don't care. And I went to work for half an hour during stage two, and I don't regret that. I got that out of the way. But, um, um, the, the good thing though, is that the tire strategy really didn't matter in the end. I think that was the, the, the optional tire didn't actually matter at the end of the race. Um, when they started the final stage, everyone tick picked the same tires and pretty much everyone, except for like two guys, had the exact same strategy at the end of the race for tires. So it literally made no difference. So like, whatever, you know, it, it didn't matter. So whatever. But um, so it was so it turned into just a regular Richmond strategy, tire strategy race, you know, normal tire, tire strategy, not option tire strategy. It's a standard tire strategy. And it was really good. You know, there was a bunch of cars that were fast. There were a bunch of cars that were slow, but got better as the race went on. There were dynamics. The, the interesting stuff that we used to see in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s that we don't see any goddamn where else. You know, it's only here. Um, but anyway. <laughs> um, the race, I'm four and a half minutes into this video and I haven't even started talking about the purpose of me making this video. This actually is a race review. Un unbelievable, dude. Um, I'm extremely caffeinated in case you couldn't tell. I have had two Celsiuses, Celsii. I have had two of them. That is 400 milligrams of caffeine. How I'm still alive, how my heart is still like doing that without like going boom, you know, explosions and stuff. I don't know. It's a mystery. Anyway, um, 
it got late in the race and like it was looking like it was just going to be hamlin winning and then but like bell was there too and then he had a speeding penalty so lamau so much for that and then Truex blew up for absolutely no fucking reason, because even though Richmond is like my favorite track in the last four years, it's like the prime location where Truex gets absolutely straight up no lubed fuck. There is less lube than there is consent when it comes to the fucking of Truex at Richmond. It is just it absolutely boggles the mind how many times he has gotten fucked over at this track. It's absolutely baffling. It... it, it it's unfathomable how often he gets straight up no lube fucked at this goddamn track. So, of course, he's the only goddamn car in the entire fucking field that ever has a mechanical issue in the modern day and age of 2024. In the 2024th year of our Lord, he's the only motherfucker that ever has mechanical issues. The only one. And, um, but yeah, the, not the point. That's not even the point. Um, so Bell fucked his own ass, and then it looked like it was just gonna be Hamlin winning. But then, but then, lo, loyal viewer, can you believe what happened? It started looking like Logano was gonna win. Yeah, and Logano closed in, and it was terrible. But then, but then, approaching out of nowhere, who was a man that was having the best race of his career. Did you know that Austin Dillon has been racing in the Cup Series since 2013? Or maybe it's 2012. He might have had one start in 2012. I don't actually remember. I don't have racing reference open. All I know is that he's been racing in the Cup Series for over a decade. Ten years. Yep, that sure is a thing. And he was putting together... The best race of his career. If if anything, the first good race of his career ever. <laughs> ever. The man, and, and this has nothing to do with the option tire. He qualified in the top 10, and he ran top 10 all day until late in the race, where suddenly he's fucking fast. And we've seen him do good at Richmond in the past. Was it 2020? That he should have won, but instead it was yet another fucking race that Harvick won en route to not winning the championship because this points format is a pile of fucking dog shit. Yes, the first good race that Austin Dillon has had since then. And mm, can you fucking... Uh, and then he fucking passes Logano on talent. It wasn't even a tire differential. He just straight up drove down Logano and passed him. And then he closed in on Hamlin and could not pass Hamlin. The package is still shit. Can you believe this? But loyal viewer, this is not where it ends. Hamlin pit with like 50 to go, 60 to go, and then Logano pit the next lap, and then Dylan the next lap. Um... Austin lost two seconds in that process, but this motherfucker dug. He pulled them belts tight, and he drove it into the fucking corner every single time. And he got around Logano again. And on only a two-lap differential on tire with Hamlin, he got around Hamlin. Without lap traffic, I'm pretty sure. Actually, Hamlin had an issue in traffic, but he was going to pass him regardless. Austin Dillon straight up pulled an Eric Almarola on our ass and just randomly, despite having 30 sec being 32nd in points coming into this race, motherfucker was behind Rick Ware Racing in points. And here he is, just having the race of his career, just driving around everyone and just driving to a three-second lead with two laps to go. And then Stenhouse happened. Oh my God, dude. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., might be the worst NASCAR driver of all time. I'm not kidding. He is so bad. I, I, I hate Ricky Stenhouse so fucking much. How this motherfucker has a Daytona 500 and Mark Martin doesn't is fucking offensive on a personal level. I am offended. I am offended as a fan of racing. I am offended as a fan of uh, motorsports in general. I am offended as a fan of cars. I'm offended as a human being. Stenhouse sucks so much. How has his career lasted this long? He coasted through the Nationwide Series in the first season where they finally stopped giving points to leeches. But at this point, he was the only motherfucker that was full-time that was halfway fucking decent. 
And even then he sucked ass. Even then he was wrecking at the end of Iowa and the only reason he won that race is Carl Edwards drove into his ass. The only reason that he has two championships is because NASCAR specifically picked that season for them to stop counting points for cup drivers. If it was any other year, any other year, even if it was 2009, it would have fucking made a difference. It would, uh, there would have been more, there would have been better drivers in the Bush series, 100%. 100%. I don't know why I keep grabbing this. I, I, I must be getting old. I must be getting old because I'm doing the uh, dad fucking gripping the goddamn thing here. Fucking sitting in the back seat of a car that's parked. And I'm s sitting out here like my fucking, you know, 16 year old son's getting onto the interstate for the first time. Use your fucking blinkers, kid. Use your fucking blinkers. Austin Dillon's putting together the best race of his career, and he absolutely 100% earned this win. He had a great race from start to finish with absolutely no issues, and, you know, his crew chief went back to Justin Alexander after, you know, the fucking musical chairs that is being Austin Dillon's crew chief. Then just Justin Alexander landed in the fucking seat once again, you know, just casually. And now Austin Dillon's fucking winning races again. However... Ricky Stenhouse ruined it because he's awful and the worst fucking thing ever. And I hate Ricky Stenhouse so fucking much. So what happens? Can you believe that they went down pit road and Austin Dillon had a good stop? Oh my goodness. And Denny Hamlin didn't. Man, really could have used that in the spring. Anyway, uh, not the point of this video. St Dillon fucking had a good stop. You know, it was nice to see a, you know, pit crew with Bass Pro Shops on their suits actually having a good pit stop. It was a seismic moment, to say the least. Felt like an entirely different fucking universe for a second. Felt like I jumped timelines watching a Bass Pro Shops pit crew actually managing to maintain fucking positions on the pit lane. Truly a fucking moment in time. So what happens? He picks the inside, and at that, at that moment, I was like, it's over. He's lost. He's not going to win. Because what happened? Legato just drove around him on the outside, and I'm just sitting there like, of course. Of course. This is, of course, what would happen. And I was ready to just click X on the stream that I definitely paid for and go to fucking bed, content with the fact that I lost three hours of sleep for no reason, only to watch another bullshit Legato win. Yes, thank God for this. Uh, what a good life that I live. But something in the back of my mind, something was telling me to just hold on. Any other race, any other late race restart, any other green-white checkered at any other track, this race is over the second Logano clears on the exit of two. But something told me, hold on just a second. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. And I gave it a minute. And and Austin Dillon finally became the driver of the three. He dumped Logano's shit. Can I just put my phone down for a second? Encore. Encore. Bravo. Standing ovation. I'd stand up if I wasn't in my car. Standing ovation. What an absolutely picturesque moment. That was very satisfying. I am so glad I stayed up for that. And then, and then it looked like Denny Hamlin was going to swoop in and steal the win and piss off everyone in the stands on the internet in general. Absolutely make them mauled. It looked like Hamlin was going to do it. But for some reason, he gassed up on the exit of four. Even though the three was going so slow because he fucking overdrove the corner and destroyed Logano. If Hamlin had just hooked the yellow line and just stayed on the bottom, he could have coasted to the line and won. But no, this motherfucker gasses it up on the exit of four and slides right in front of Dylan. Now... I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. They took each other out in Reddick one, right? No. 
Yeah, I was waiting for that. That was the, exactly what I thought was going to fucking happen. That was the exact thing that I thought was going to happen in that fucking moment. In that moment, in that fucking, you know, time stood still. And I saw the 11 just sliding up the track and pulling the three into the wall. That's what I saw. But thankfully, thankfully, it didn't happen. Austin Dillon won. He wrecked two guys in the span of one quarter. And Austin Dillon won for the fifth time in the Cup Series. Five times this man has won in the Cup Series. Oh, man. And... Uh, <laughs> And the internet reacted in the exact way that you imagined it did. Ladies and gentlemen, Dale's back. Austin Dillon, you can take that gun out of your mouth because you're the real three. That was, or that was just, the, that was just, you know, um, what's it called? Sistine Chapel level art. Michelangelo could not have fucking forged a more pristine moment in time. That was absolutely amazing. It was a condemnation of everything that NASCAR has become. It was one of the most, you know, undeserving drivers next to his fucking brother. One of the most undeserving drivers to have had a decade, a decade long cup series career who's bullsh who's absolutely backed he backed into all four of his previous wins absolutely backed into him this isn't even the first time that he's dumped someone for the win you could argue that it's happened two times before no he actually avoided the wreck at daytona in 20 whatever the fuck he actually avoided that wreck, so I guess I can't talk too much shit. Um, but he fucking did it! He won again! And the first interview after his was Logano on the fucking, in the fucking pit lane, and he was so mad. He was seething so fucking hard. He was like, oh, it was a load of shit. Yeah, I think he said shit and everything. It was a load of shit. That was, that was some of the worst racing I've ever seen. Hey, Joey, it sucks, doesn't it? You fucking fuckwad. I can count on fucking, I can count five times off the top of my head that your fucking stupid ass did exactly what he did. 2018 Martinsville, 2015 Kansas, whatever year he dumped Byron at Darlington, and then he also wrecked Harvick at Pocono the same way, and I'm gonna count Martin, Mar Mark Martin at Pocono, because if you're gonna bump and run Mark Martin in 2012 when he's 52 years old and you have 15 lap fresher tires, you're a fucking dumb bitch. Five times off the top of my head. I didn't even have to fucking use a tenth of my brain power to figure that out. You only use 10% of your brain. That's all I needed. That's all I needed to think of times that Logano did exactly what he did. It sucks, doesn't it, you fucking cunt bag? Fuck you. Fuck you, motherfucker. That was the greatest moment. I don't care. I don't care. That's the greatest moment of 2024. That right there. Just that alone. Even if dumb fuck Reddick won that race, it was worth watching Logano get dumped. Get fucked. Now, however, I will say this. In defense of Austin Dillon. In defense of Austin Dillon. He, 19 minutes into this video, we get to the title. He ran the best race of his career in a season where RCR, as an organization, has had zero good races in the Cup Series in the last calendar year, in the last calendar year, they have had no good races. And here comes Austin Dillon, 32nd in points, just randomly appears out of nowhere, has the best weekend 
of his career, and he straight up beat Logano and Hamlin on a track that's virtually impossible to pass. He passed them both on track on equalish tires. I, I say ish, but it was like two laps difference. It was equal tires for all intents and purposes. He passed them both. And he had a three-second lead with two laps to go. If Stenhouse hadn't been an absolute fucking brain-dead moron for no reason, we would be sitting here talking about Austin Dillon putting together the best drive of his career. Instead, because of a stupid, dumb fuck Stenhouse, this is what we get instead. Thanks, Stenhouse. You really are the ultimate wild card. You are the ultimate wild card to throw a monkey wrench into literally any fucking race. If he is still on track, they're not done wrecking. And it's always him at this track. He did the exact same thing in 2019. He wrecked Truex for no reason. At least Truex came back and won. That would have been added to the fucking litany of bullshit that's happened to Truex at this track. 2017, 2022, 2023, 2024, both races. He fucking was the victim of Spingate. Where did that happen? Richmond. He gets fucked at this track like there's no tomorrow. He gets fucked on this track like it's a just for fans post. I can't fucking believe this shit, how often Truex gets fucked at this track. But no, thanks to fucking Stenhouse, we're sitting here talking about Austin Dillon dumping two people in one corner and truly becoming the driver of the three car, truly living up to Dale Earnhardt's legacy, and everyone is mad. But I'm not mad. I am virtually on the verge of actually fucking dying of heat stroke because it's very hot in this car. And I'm also about to die of a heart attack because I've had two Celsius drinks today. And I'm also about to die because I'm still depressed, but that's besides the point. I still think that it wasn't his fault that he wrecked Hamlin. I would say 50-50. Hamlin, if he just wrapped the inside, he would have won like nothing. But instead he cast it up. What a fucking idiot. This is why he has no championships. He has absolutely... No fucking sense. He has absolutely no idea what to do in the, at the end of a race. He is just the ultimate choke artist. How can Denny Hamlin have 50 fucking five wins? How? He's the ultimate choke artist next to Justin Allgaier. I'm so hot. I'm going to wrap up this video. I had a little bit more to say, but it's so fucking hot in here. So, yeah, I mean, you can't really justify him wrecking Logano aside from Logano being a dumb bitch and how Austin, oh, he deserved to win this race after putting together the best run of his entire career and having a absolutely perfect race from start to finish and passing two of the, you know, winningest drivers at this fucking track of Richmond in the modern era on talent with no assist from, you know, fucking red tires. And no assist from lap traffic virtually, you know. We should be talking about how Austin Dillon put together the best drive of his entire career. But thanks to Ricky Stenhouse Jr., we're not. So the moral of the story is fuck Stenhouse. How the fuck has his career lasted this long? Fucking retire, you bag of shit. Anyway, I was not planning on having this be the return video. I actually had a very heartfelt video that I was going to upload at some point, but I had no idea when. I've, I've had a bunch of ideas for what my return was going to be besides just that. I had, you know, a ton of ideas. I didn't know what to go with. And I, but I guess this is it. I guess this is the return. I don't know when the next upload is going to be. Um, but I do know one thing. We're going to go back to streaming. Streams are coming back. I don't know if it's going to be this week or later on. Because I've got a bunch of races coming up, so I kind of just need to save my... I need to go to bed early, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah. I'm going to go take a shower. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in whatever comes next. 
I'm sorry that I've been gone for over a month, but I have literally thought about killing myself multiple times in that time period. So, sorry not sorry. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye. Say bye, Tails. Tails says bye. Say bye, Muffin. Muffin says fuck you. Honestly, I feel that. Anyway, I'm leaving. I, I have to get out of this fucking car. Oh my god. <laughs>